The old, the old Testament lesson this morning is from what, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 12 through 17. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. And then beginning in verse 12, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. The uh, New Testament lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse 25. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And then from um, Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4, beginning with verse 16. Wait a minute. Um, so, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, empty me of me and fill me with you so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. And Lord, open the ears of the hearers here today that they may hear what it is you are calling on their hearts to take from your message into the world. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. 
If we are being honest with ourselves, many of us here will recognize our propensity to feel pressured to live up to some sort of standard. Maybe it looks, it means to look a certain way, to act a certain way, or to perform in a certain way. Expectations seem to appear all around us, even often within ourselves. Our American culture has this underlying idea that success means being well educated by putting extra hours in at work, and so on and so forth. You see, I can remember my mom telling me that if I didn't go to college, I would be nothing. And I saw a similar thing happen to a family member of mine whose parents thought college was the answer for him. It would bring him out of the poverty that they were so used to. But after several failed attempts at college, they had to all accept that he just was not cut out to be a college student. We now have these new expectations put on us. Society now expects us to take a find a group that we identify with and to fight for the ideals of that group at all cost. It's even seen as virtuous to do this. What it comes down to is so many people are exhausted from trying to meet the expectations of their groups, from trying to meet societal expectations. But the studies show, inside, people are continuing to be more depressed and suffering. In today's Bible lesson, we see another way that we are called by Jesus that can relieve us and anyone from the burdens of expectations. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. But what does resting in Christ look like? Well, before we can delve into answering this question, we must first grasp the context of this passage. You see, in the verses leading up to this passage, Jesus is noting how the powerful, the intelligent, and those seen as leaders have not been able to recognize who he is because of their too busy adhering to their societal expectations. He pronounces their failure to recognize them as their, uh, to recognize him as their unrepented sins. He sees their following societal expectations as a rejection of him. This is why he so often attacks the, verbally attacks the Pharisees and Sadducees because they have found a group that they identify with and they let that group influence them. It clouds their eyes to the point where they fail to see Jesus for who he really is, the Messiah. The passage today that was read picks up when Jesus turns away from the people and offers a prayer. Jesus' prayer, though, is not focused on the powerful, the wise, the intelligent, or those who so often attract our attention, like that of the Pharisees and Sadducees of his time. Rather, Jesus' prayer is focused on the infants, as he puts it. Or in other words, those who find these societal burdens and heavy and need to find rest from them. Here, rest is not offered to the strongest and most powerful. Rest is offered to those who recognize they have been made weary by the world's demands. What Jesus offers is not freedom from work, but freedom from societal expectations and demands that go against Christ's teachings. When Christ says, take my yoke, my easy yoke, he is giving us something to do. He is giving us a purpose like we discussed last week. Christ offers us a purpose that summons forth our best. It means that work 
is motivated by a passionate desire to see Christ's kingdom realized here on earth. In our community, in this body of believers, we see that we are to be the voice and hands of God, that we have been called to be that beacon on a hill, and this is the purpose that Christ has given us. Jesus offers to relieve our burdens. This offer is to find rest in him does not mean that we don't play a part in that offer. In fact, Jesus is inviting us to take action by seeking his way of coming to him for relief of our burdens. But what does it look like when we come to him for relief of all those burdens? Well, it's more than just a prayer for relief. In fact, a way in which we also find relief from our burdens is through this body of believers. We, the body of believers, are to be the voice and hands of God, right? Well, if so, then we need to remember that when we meet someone who may not be as powerful or well-educated, or maybe they are both and they appear to have it all together, but they share that they don't, or those who feel the demands of society are just more than they can bear. But when they come into our present, we are to love them, no matter their status, no matter what their past is, no matter what. And we can encourage them to find rest in Christ. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive to be better people, to reach goals in life, or that we should look down on people who do. In life, there are people who achieve human excellence. These people have some things in common. They set goals. They get up early or they stay up late. They concentrate hard and they repeat this process again and again. What I am saying is there is one thing that doesn't work that way. The knowledge of God. It turns out you can't study enough, stay up late enough, get up early enough, concentrate hard enough to ever fully know God. This is not only because God will forever be beyond our comprehension, but it is also because God wants us to find rest in Christ and not be wearied by all the demands to do more or to be better. God claimed us as God's children through Christ's death and resurrection. Christ called us to rest in his finished work. Resting in Christ relieves us from any expectations. This all means we don't have to be the best all the time. We don't have to be pure all the time. Because God knows we will make mistakes in our life and in our faith journeys. That's why we are called to put our rest in him continually. Now there's something to note here before we can move on. Some might say, well, doesn't Christ tell us to live out our faith? Well, to understand what it means to rest in Christ means comprehending the difference between faith and faithfulness. Faith is a belief and assurance of God's word and all that God has done. Faithfulness is the living in accordance with that truth. In other words, faith leads to faithfulness. We can cast our burdens and rest in Christ knowing that work is done. Faithfulness or living into our calling is the gift we give back for the gift of rest given to us. We, as Paul points out, can be assured that these afflictions, that these burdens are temporary and that God's work from the beginning has assured our eternal inheritance. It was not anything we ever did. The reality is that if you believe you are responsible for your own salvation, then you will struggle to find rest in Christ. Because resting in Christ means acknowledging that he chose us, not the other way around. To those who recognize their need for Christ, Jesus comes and says, give me your burdens and take my yoke upon you. The yoke 
that frees you from societal expectations, that frees you from your own ideologies, that frees you from any burden placed upon you. Now I have to share with you that accepting the gift of rest which frees us from expectations is something I still daily continue to struggle with. Perhaps this is why God brought this sermon to me this week. Well, you, well, maybe not all of you, might know this about me. Or you might be surprised to know that I tend to be a perfectionist. I tend towards trying to meet the expectations that are either placed on me or that I perceive are placed upon me. My desire to help all people and love all people and welcome all people means I often forget to rest in Christ. If I'm honest, sometimes I even forget to rest, period. But I remember that it is important to take on Christ's yoke because that yoke is light. It is love and peace. It is that yoke that reminds me to trust in God's plan. This is, again, something that makes me struggle because I'm, I'm a person that likes to make lists and accomplish everything on those lists because those lists are meeting the expectations. Judy, I know you know this because she knows I make lists for everything. However, though, I've learned that most times I need to put that list aside or review the list and ask myself if that task is serving to meet someone's expectations or even my own expectations. And if so, then I need to let it go. I am reminded of this whenever I hear Psalm 139, the psalm that was read this morning. I am reminded that we can rest in Christ because we know that God's ultimate plan for our lives was one that he knew, as the psalmist says, before we were even knit together in our mother's womb. We rest knowing all Christ has done, has paved the way for the unseen things that we put our hope in, the our eternity with God. We can relax knowing that our purpose, which is to be vessels of God's will and stewards of our individual calls, is an intergenerational and is not completely reliant on us being perfectly adherent to our roles. Let us remember that Christ extended us a gift here, a gift of the freedom of societal expectations, the freedom from ideological purity, the freedom from all things that burden us. Let us also remember that by resting in Christ, we joyfully respond through our faithfulness and we respond by sharing the yoke of Christ, that same freedom with all people, both near and far, for the sake of the gospel and the sake of the world. Amen.